You thought that this was going to be a video about night vision. Gotcha. Well, it mostly is, but in this we will also explore some fascinating ways in which night vision is similar in function not only to photography, but even the human body itself. If you are anything like me, you are actually quite surprised to find that night vision devices ranging from cheap to expensive all seem to require manual focusing. In today's world of technology where the feature of autofocus is so common, I was truly caught off guard but admittedly, this was due to personal ignorance which formed into a beautiful opportunity to learn. What we will be discussing today is not only the basics of focusing your night vision, but also how to focus specifically a PVS-14 in this example to infinity, as well as why you would want to do so. First of all, why not just use autofocus? Besides, that was the origin of my initial surprise when learning about achieving a clear image with night vision. I'm going to pay thousands of dollars for a device that needs me to physically input a calculated turn of the objective lens in order to see properly? I remember my first cheap camera at 15 years old having autofocus. What gives? Well, younger me, you somewhat answered your question within the question itself. Yes, autofocus is convenient and works well most of the time, and it can even be found in everything from antiquated to brand new technology, but let's just say that the cheap camera from when I was 15 probably would not give me the best results that I was looking for, especially when filming in low light, and obviously the entire point behind night vision is to be used in low light. Even in high-end photography and cinematography, believe it or not, manual focus is preferred in dark environments. There simply doesn't exist enough light for the camera to focus to an acceptable standard in the dark. Focusing your night vision is much the same in this regard, if not to an exaggerated degree. Do you really want an autofocus function on your night vision device to be struggling to focus on anything at all, meanwhile you perform some task of extreme importance such as drawing your firearm, to which the autofocus then puts that in focus while making the target blurry? Of course this can lead to disaster and easily explains why autofocus would cause much more harm than good in this scenario. Clearly, we actually do want the capability to manually focus our devices. With that established, let's make clear, if you may pardon the pun, how traditionally focusing your night vision works when you are not at an infinite focus. Honestly, it's not all that bad of an experience at all, though this is what most people take issue with. If you want the best focus possible on an object in close proximity, you can focus perfectly to that object and achieve a beautiful image. The downside to this is that anything much further or closer to you will either be noticeably less in focus or blatantly out of focus. If you find yourself in a situation where you require such a fine focus, or if you are in a scenario where you generally just have the time to keep adjusting from one distance to another, then it could very well be worth the sacrifice. You may not fall into one of these categories though, so let's now discuss a couple means of navigating around the normal way of going about night vision focus. First, what exactly is infinite focus? Going back to our example about cameras, infinity focus is actually very common and valuable in photography and cinematography. Achieving an infinite focus is accomplished by simply adjusting your manual focus to a point of infinity or anything that is generally very far away. By doing this, incoming rays of light are essentially entering parallel to the lens, which forms a clearer image by forming the most narrow points of light possible to hit the camera's sensor. The circle of confusion is the photography term that we are talking about here. This describes how, when light enters the device, the diameter of the point of light itself affects the clarity of the image, a wider point being less clear than a narrow one. In night vision, infinite focus is most typically performed by focusing on the stars and the night sky, as if you needed another excuse to look up there anyway, right? Do that, and everything from that point of infinity back towards you will be decently in focus aside from objects within extremely close proximity. 
this close-up distance where the image is not in focus would be called the hyperfocal distance in photography. Now, if you're too cool to bother with infinite focus or would like to compound on top of it, we will discuss an important night vision accessory, which again works perfectly for adjusting your device's focus and also relates totally with photography. This is an iris attachment, and I do have a dedicated video to this on the Don't Do Daylight channel, so feel free to watch that and much more here if you're really into learning. Beyond that, I'd truly appreciate it if you take the time to show support by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. You can even financially support via paypal.me slash don't do daylight. Thank you to anybody who does that. Anyway, the iris accessory is quite literally just a device that either expands or contracts a hole or aperture in front of the optic which in turn affects its focus and depth of field as well as the amount of light being allowed to enter the device. The DIY version of this device, which I made and featured here, is literally constructed of an iris that was specifically designed for use on a camera, so that's how tight this correlation is. In camera work, the iris adjustment is referred to as the f-stop. Think of this like one of those really long variable aperture zoom lenses on a DSLR camera that you think of when you imagine a cliché photographer twisting their lens as it moves in or out accordingly. By doing this, the camera's seen image is made narrower the further distance out that the lens is focused, which is closing the aperture or iris. I'm not even at the level of an amateur in photography, so please bear with me when making these explanations, by the way. This is just what I've gathered from online research, so if you have a better way to convey this science, then feel free to do so in a comment. All of this talk about irises should be reminding you of, well, you. I mean, you do literally have an iris as part of each of your eyes, and this is quite the amazing connection to make as it functions very similarly constricting and expanding to adjust the level of light ingress. This is done after light has been refracted by the cornea and just before the light hits the lens of your eye, which sits behind the iris. The light bends once more at this point before engaging with the retina, which forms the image itself through a nearly unbelievable process of electrical impulses to the brain. If you think about it, implementing an iris on your optic is essentially using two irises when considering how your eye itself also has an iris. Just a funny thought. As we can see, there are quite a few ways to focus your night vision, and no shortage of philosophy exists behind these many options. Ultimately, I can enjoy the night vision experience in any of these ways and with any range of devices, though I do find myself using each method individually depending on conditions, or even something as simple as just not having used a particular method in a while and wanting to experience it again. I can't say that there is certainly a right answer as to which focus option is best for you, but what I can say is thank you for taking the time to hopefully learn or be entertained here at the Don't Do Daylight channel. If you feel that this work is worthwhile, support is appreciated and does not go unnoticed. Always remember, my friend, don't have a good day. Have a good night.